my position will be serving you guys, finding values for you. It's not just a title. I don't want a title. I want to see how else I can help my agents, how else I can can help the other. Mm -hmm. Yes, how how Mm -hmm. we can change. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jenny Woon. Welcome and Happy New Year. This is 2024, and I have an amazing inspirational guest with me, Sharon Sala of 88 West Realty. Welcome to our show. How are you doing? Good morning, Jenny. It's an honor to be on your show, on your podcast. I'm one of your fans, actually. Been watching and listening to your topics. Excellent. What you're doing is fantastic. Good morning to everyone, to your audience. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing so well. I've just had an amazing, I just came back from an amazing vacation. I'm so ready for 2024. And it looks like you are too. Before we get started, though, we want to know what your superpower is. Uh, My superpower is resilience. I am the most resilient individual known in my family, in my community. (laughs) You know, uh, we all know what it takes to be a realtor and resilience is absolutely relevant. Grit and resilience is required to be a realtor. Um, Tell us a little bit about how you got started in the business. It's, It's funny. When I moved to Canada 20 years ago, coming from the background of being an educator, university instructor, Um, so I would never, ever consider myself to become a realtor. Uh, But then I started doing my MBA at Royal Rose University towards the end of my career. I mean, doing my um, MBA. So I thought that I had a house in Queens, in West Vancouver. I wanted to to sell the property. It was around 11 at night. I did the calculation. The commission came out to be around $50,000 equal to tuition of the MBA. I said, no (laughs) way. I paid $50,000 for my MBA. I'm not going to pay $50,000 to sell my house. I registered for my license right at that time. It was around 11.30 at night to to get my license to sell my house. Guess what? I never sold the house. I built it, lived in the house, but I I think it was a destiny. Um, So that was the way I started becoming a realtor. And then since I started being an entrepreneur, I always wanted to run my own show, to have my own company, to have the culture and the values that I want to um, to reinforce in my own community, in my own company. So that was my vision. So as soon as my second daughter got married, then I said, OK, this is the time. Let's do it. <laughs> and I'm very amazing. Happy. Happy about that. Well, I'm assuming you, it took a little bit of time between getting your license to being your own realtor to now owning a brokerage. You're the owner and managing broker of uh, a good a couple of dozen, um, over a couple of dozen of agents. So tell us uh, where you found the the need or like the inspiration to actually start your own real estate brokerage. Uh, Jenny, to be honest, so from the day one, from the beginning, um, as I said, I'm an entrepreneur. Never in my life worked for anyone. Never. <laughs> um, only for yeah. a you know, few months. So I knew that uh, from the day one, I knew that I'm going to start my company. Uh, but then uh, okay. because of my family situations and uh, my life priorities, um, I'm a mother of two girls, successful, highly successful girls. So it was my priority to make sure that everything is good with their life uh, and they needed my assistance. Um, and I knew that if I want to start my own company, it, it's going to take 27, 24, seven of my time. So, uh, and then once that one, the life priority was taken care of, then I said, okay, I'm going to dedicate myself to, uh, starting the brokerage. So that was the only reason. So I was inspired opening my brokerage from day one. <laughs> from day one. Yes. Okay. Cause not a lot. I, I, I feel like the, the thought of, owning a real estate brokerage and being a managing broker is kind of like a dying occupation because number one, you and I know that it's in the commission of, of selling and selling homes, right? Yeah. What I'm a managing broker as well and an owner broker. 
the only sole owner of my franchise. And I obviously, I have certain reasons. Other than being an entrepreneur, what other um, like benefits and purpose have you found in running a female-led brokerage? Well, um, I would say self-improvement, leadership um, practice, and then being a visionary. Um, so these are the qualities that I've uh, realized that have been rehearsed, reinforced, and fostered. So um, once, as soon as you start your own brokerage, as soon as you start your own company, I would say that you start hiring and then you start. There are so many things, so many tasks that at the beginning, I didn't have my resources were limited. Obviously, I had to wear so many hats. And then uh, it yeah. was like a university. Now, comparing uh, running a business, comparing to MBA I got from Royal Roads, I would say this is triple MBA, <laughs> four <laughs> times MBA. This is just an amazing experience. I always encourage people who do have the entrepreneurial spirit, go for it. Um, and Jenny, I mean, I'm sure that you've heard a lot of resistance or objections. And why do you want to do that? As a realtor, you can make much, much more money. Yes, that's very true. But mm -hmm. money is not the only uh, is not the only goal in life. I mean, at least for me, honing my leadership skill. And then this is something that came from early childhood. Um, I remember when I was only seven and my parents used to pair, uh, travel they would ask me to look after the other siblings, <laughs> like older mm. siblings. I was the one who was in charge at home. So, and I always had the desire to um, find um, a platform, find somewhere, somehow to, in, uh, to hone my leadership skill and then to be able to help, uh, to help other people. Mm -hmm. And talking about leadership and using the right platforms, you are running for director at large with the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. What does that, like, what is that reason? I mean, obviously leadership and educating agents and improving our industry, but what are your reasons for running? Excellent question, Jenny. I mean, you're a broker owner. You know that. We already, our plate is full of tasks and responsibilities. Now you add one more fundamental task to it. So it requires a lot of courage. <laughs> it yeah, requires a lot of courage. Absolutely. But then what is the reason? My main reason is uh, to be able to help a broader uh, group of realtors. So I'm helping my, my own community, my own realtors in my uh, boutique brokerage. Now I want to I want to expand it. I want to see how how else I can or how else I can help the um, other realtors. And I believe um, mm -hmm. being part of the uh, director of uh, board of directors, I would be able to be involved in making decisions, strategic decisions, and also being able to implement or execute the um, our latest strategic strategic decision, which I love all the. All the goals and objectives have been laid out for our strategic uh, um, uh, planning of 2024-2026. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, I understand what it takes. I've already started talking to agents. And I know I've accumulated the thoughts and ideas of how else we can, what, what we can do, what are the values that we can offer to our members. Um, so these are the things that I want to push forward when I become elected and become a member. Okay. Well, what are you campaigning for right now? What What is your goal, the strategic goal for 2024? Because you did mention that there are some goals and um, let's, let's talk about that right now. What are some reasons why our listeners should be voting for you? Um, again, I go back to, um, if I want to talk about specifically strategic plan for which has been recently released, uh, there are a couple of things that I really they're quite close to my heart, near and dear to my heart. One of them is to innovation, AI, how we can enhance the AI, how we can improve AI tools and AI suites for, and then give them back to our realtor members. That is extremely important. We have to be able to, we have to be able to um, compete with the privatized AIs that are available on the market. And then th this mm -hmm. is something that actually, Jenny, it breaks my heart now. This is extremely important. Listen, we do have the most valuable currency in the market, which is data. Now, we have, we know mm. what what are what have been listed. We know what have been sold. We know what what is the consumer behavior. 
we do have access to all those information. Now that information has been taken out by private companies and then they do, they generate leads based on that, based on our own information. Then they sell it back to us. So this is our, our own data Hmm. being sold to the realtors. (laughs) How is that possible? So we have to reverse that. We have to be able to sell data. So real estate board should sell data. That's, that is my number one agenda. We need to find out other sources that we can generate revenue through data that we have, through the information, mm-hmm. the most valuable currency. We have to cash it out. We have to exchange it and then change it into values, give it back to the members. Now, we have to be able to do our own lead generation and then give it back to our members instead of us mm-hmm. going to the private companies instead mm-hmm. of us and, and then the paying pain. for things yes. yeah we and we're the ones that are generating that information we own without that. us knowing we own it, it right and somebody right. takes it so out do you, sell us back do you to us. feel like yeah do you feel like kriya and rebgv has the capacity to do that well jenny i'm sure that you know what kriya is planning to do it's been uh, it's been a big talk and a, with regards to realtor.ca and i think that's smart they want to privatize um, realtor.ca i think it's smart mm-hmm. um but we have to we have to figure out we have to figure out how how it's going to lay out or how the the once it is privatized what is going to happen with the revenue because realtor.ca belongs to the members belongs mm-hmm. to all the boards and members so that is mm-hmm. something that we need to find out. But I, I believe that's the right path. We have, as I said, we have the most valuable currency. We should find out how we can exchange that currency into values, give it back to the members instead of private companies do it. Yes, they have. Um, we do have the power. Sharon, we are we're talking about something really exciting here because information, as you said, is so lucrative. It's been capitalized in our business. And uh, I, I have Tony here right next to me. You have a slogan, Empowering Realtors, which is what we've been doing on this podcast, right? How are you shaping the future for us? Other than uh, the, the use of AI, please tell us how you've been empowering realtors at your brokerage and how you can empower realtors outside of your brokerage at this moment. I strongly believe in entrepreneurial spirit or mindset of individuals. What I do in my brokerage is from day one, when they start coaching classes with me, I said, hey, once you become a realtor, you should know that you're an entrepreneur, you're starting your own business, you have to empower yourself. Number one, you have to be visionary. That's extremely important to be a visionary leader. You, you have to be able to become a leader. So I just constantly remind them to be visionary by asking them questions, putting, when, putting them on hot spot. And then what do you think? Where do you see yourself? Try to figure mm-hmm. out your why. And then by helping them in uh, finding their why and then shaping their, their vision for five years, 10 years, two years, whatever it is, and then plan the route. What is it that needs to be to take you to the point that you want to, be, to see yourself in five years? What is it that you have to do? What, are, what is your action plan? These are the things that I constantly remind my agents constantly we work on those and this is what i want to do when i get elected so we know we know that what is our strategic plan for two years perfect it's gonna it's gonna we are gonna use that as our guideline as our as our gps and then it's gonna so we will focus 100 percent on the goals that we are gonna achieve put it right in front of us give us a timeline and then based on the timeline mm-hmm. we break it down into the action boom one two three Go ahead and then do it. And of course, in the meantime, we have to we have to examine, assess, and see what we have achieved. Come back, and then if we need to revamp anything, of course we are. We, nothing is uh, is set in stone. This is what I always tell my agents: that they, be ready to change. Em- embrace. I love your energy. I know, so embrace good. I love the your energy. <laughs> Sharon, ha- have you noticed that when you're taking your agents and other uh, fellow realtors through this process? Is it easy for them to identify their why? Because 
I love how mm-hmm. you're talking about this as a strategic plan, but what's the most difficult part, I guess, when you're taking agent through uh, the process? Tony, you nailed it. This is difficult. It's not easy. It, it's super difficult. I understand that. And then actually, that's the problem with many people, not just agents, but with, um, with everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that um, many people, we are lost. Finding the why is the most critical, fundamental question in life that we have to work on. <laughs> it takes time, especially mm-hmm. for immigrants. When immigrants, some, I mean, if you're immigrant or your parents, you're, you come from an immigrant family, you would know that. Um, once they move or once we move to a new country, we start from zero. Level zero, sometimes below level zero. So we have to start everything. So, and that's the, that's where we have to start thinking about why am I here? Why? Mm-hmm. What is my why? What is it that I want to do? What is it making, making me happy? What is my vision? Where do I see myself in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? Um, mm-hmm. And then I constantly remind these questions, um, giving them direction. And I believe once you find your why, once you know what your destination is, the rest would be easy. The rest would be easy. Of right. course, it requires dedication. Of course, it requires resilience, constant work. Yes, it requires efforts. But then the first is find the goal. The rest will come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shrin, how can um, agents get involved with uh, the board of directors and how can those people hold the position in the future? I love that like, question. Stay, stay I love that it. question <laughs> because... This is actually the conversation I always have with other realtors. And I said, I want to open the doors for you guys. Once I am ele- elected, I want to see that, okay, how we can streamline the process, how we can advertise. And I have to be honest with you, probably you're aware of this fact as well. Um, this is becoming the board of director is not advertised enough. It's not talked mm-hmm. about enough. Nobody knows it. Actually, I didn't know enough about it until after I got frustrated. And I said, Shirin, this is <laughs> this is a time. You got to do something. Then I started again, started late at night. I started doing research and said, okay, now I'm going to apply. I'm going to do it. Hopefully, if I get uh, elected. If not, I'm going to do it next, next year or the year after. Uh, I won't stop until I get to that position. And then I, we, we realtors need to know about what is the job, what it entails, and then how Mm. important it is. Or if they don't want to be involved as a, don't want to be involved as a work as a director, how they can help the director to be the, their voice, to voice their Mm -hmm. opinion. These are important. Now, my uh, slogan is empowering realtors by talking to them, asking them, Maybe there are things that I don't know. One example is when I w- had a conversation with one, a commercial realtor, he said, Shirin, please go and ask or please help find um, an, uh, what is that, healthcare insurance for all the realtors. We don't mm. have any healthcare insurance. And then, um, yeah. and he said that his dad works for an insurance company. His dad says it's, it's 100% possible to find a package extended health insurance for realtors. Then I started digging for more information, talk to the insurance agents. And I said, yes, of course, 15,000 people you have, say 10,000, say 5,000. All the insurance companies will be more than happy to prepare an insurance package, sell it to the realtors. Why not? This is another value. So what I'm saying is by talking to the agents, tell them that, okay, my position will be serving you guys, finding values for you. It's not just a title. I don't want a title. I want to see how else I can help my agents, how else you I can help change. the other. Mm-hmm. Yes, how, how mm-hmm. we can change. Mm, I love that. Okay. Well, we have a Roger cell phone uh, package, like mobile <laughs> services. Yeah, I, I have my brokerage. We have <laughs> Canada Life Insurance. But it, I definitely believe we can bring those premiums down if we offered it to 15,000 realtors, right? Yeah. But what a great idea. I love that idea. 
Um, your vision as a female-led real estate broker, there's not that many, but in this room here, there's three of us. How has it really shaped, uh, like your values have influenced your approach to mm. residential sales and property management specifically? Has there, can you see if it was a male-dominated real estate brokerage l- that's led by a male versus yourself? Like, have you found a different approach to that or does it not matter? Um, well, yes, um, we all know that this is the male dominated, especially when it comes to, um, property management <laughs> in sales, mm, I would see right. more women, but in property management, uh, yes, I see, and I see a lot of, um, U S companies so uh, working here and then taking our market mm. share. That is also in my agenda that uh, we should, uh, support local business, empower local business. Um, how has it, uh, I would say that, um, <sighs> We are used to it, Jenny. We are used to it. I mean, since since I was born. And I was born in a family of four girls and then five girls and then one brother. So I know it <laughs> in my bones. <laughs> what it feels, how it feels to be a woman. Um, even back home, when I started my own company, I mean, uh, it was a private school. I'm, as I said, I'm an educator. Um, so back home, um, completely, 100%, totally male-dominated country. And then, so it was quite a challenge for me to start uh, my own business. But then I was a single minority, of course. But then here I fe- I realized that I'm double minority. <laughs> Probably mm. you, you realize that, that that too. I I think yeah. here is more difficult. It's more challenging for me. Has been more challenging to me. But my personality is I embrace challenges. Maybe maybe it's wrong. Maybe, I mean, that's my personality. I love it. When I see more challenges, I go for it. And it gives me the power. And it gives me uh, the energy. And then that that is uh, the main driver for me. And it's okay. Now, this is the challenge. Now, um, I have experienced uh, the bullying situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, hey, how many years have you been in the industry? Uh, well, do you know uh, you're managing work here? Well, listen from me. Or there, are the, I've been to those situations, but I, I, I prepare myself. I always prepare myself. Um, it, these kind of um, situations, they never um, downgraded my energy. However, mm-hmm. it worked reversely. It empowered me mm-hmm. more to prepare myself more. And I believe this is the situation with many, many women entrepreneurs. Uh, we know the challenges. We prepare ourselves. And maybe I, I shouldn't uh, overgeneralize, but maybe that's the reason we perform better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this world would be run in a more kinder manner and a win-win. <laughs> oh, I love win-win. <laughs> Win-wins, yes. right? Very yeah. true, very true. <laughs> Shirin, what uh, initiatives or strategies have you implemented um, at your brokerage perhaps to, I guess, help empower and support your agents, both um, personally and professionally? Well, um, as I, I want to go back again to the why and then to um, unpacking the individual's um, potentials and the qualities, what they have. As a leader, I believe that I'm an impactor le- leader. Um, so how am I going to impact them? How am I going to uh, unpack what they know, what they have, what qualities? Sometimes it's unknown to them. So after mm. a couple of sessions of talking to each other, sometimes it's easy to to find out what is it that they, they really they can stand out. They can shine in the industry. They can shine in their personal life. They can shine in their, um, or sometimes it takes longer time. Uh, so layer after layer, talking and asking questions. These are the things that I, number one, I do is find out your why by asking as many questions as possible and then show them the direction and try to help them uh, hold their hand, walk them through as, as much as possible until they 100% realize that, okay, they, 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 can, they can navigate to the process. They can navigate the journey of their life or their professional life. Now, Holding each each other accountable, that's that's very very important, and I believe it's uh, it's helping a lot in my company. I do my best to hold individuals accountable, and I ask them that if you want, we can put in. We have set up a calendar and a reminder in our calendar, asking questions, and then or if they assign, I try because obviously I don't have much time. Assign another in, another individual and in their brokerage to and then to become their accountability partner. 
So mm, again, good idea. asking questions, trying to figure out what is it that they are really good at, how they can uh, become a better person in their life and then in their profession, and then start working on those, uh, improving their um, skill set. We do have a book club as well. And then we, I encourage mm. individuals to read and to discuss the books. Um, all my coaching material content is based on the most recent uh, books written by uh, renowned um, authors in marketing, in systems, in uh, prospecting, all of them. And then we we read them, we discuss them. We need So knowledge is extremely important. I encourage them to read as much as possible. What is yeah. your current book that you're reading? Oh my God. What I love Donald Miller because Donna Miller helps, has, helps me a lot in terms of how to uh, market the company, how to market the ideas. Um, uh, currently, actually, uh, let me look, go back. This is, this is amazing. I love it. This is, I love it. Um, I've been listening to Multipliers. Multipliers by Liz Wiseman. This is an amazing book. Women, we, all women should read it. Leader women should lead it. read this book. This is just amazing. I've listened to it so many times. Uh, Liz Wiseman talks about the leadership position and the role, in, in extremely critical role of being an impactor or being a multiplier or being a diminisher. And that's so mm. sad. You see that some, some leaders, they diminish the, the power of individual. The, they diminish the, the motivation. They kill the motivation. Uh, and I believe it's, it's important to find out what, what important role we are taking on, apart from running a brokerage. Our, I right. see myself, my main role as an individual coach to help them find the the best way uh, where they can shine, where they can excel, be a happy uh, individual, happy, successful Mm. individual. I kind of want to talk about like how nature and nurture, because you said you grew up in obviously a male-dominated country and uh, you also are one of the youngest in your family. And typically it's that your, your traits and skills are typically on an, like an older sibling, like a firstborn. So where, where do you think, you know, perhaps there's agents that are joining your brokerage and they had the same, um, kind of challenges in their life and obstacles, but they don't come out as positive as you. So where Mm. do you feel you got this resiliency? Like, where do you feel you got this uh, positive energy to keep moving forward versus another person who kind of had the same upbringing, but don't go, they're not as advanced as you? Um, You know what? Um, I'm grateful to my parents, especially to my mother. Um, she was the one who constantly empowered me and, and constantly telling me that sure, you can do it, go for it. Um, I remember I was um, eight. She taught me how to uh, how to sew, how to make dresses. And at nine, mm. she sent me out. And the, uh, I want to put you back into that context. Uh, I'm going to be 60, so 50 years ago, 51 years ago in Iran, wow. in Iran. Mm. So you can imagine it was uh, almost in, like... Hard to, it's even hard to imagine back then a nine-year-old girl would go to a store, buy the fabric, take it back home, make a dress for the younger sister. And I can I remember that. I remember even the design and everything. And she was the one who empowered me. And again, um, I believe as a leader, I have the role of empowering, encouraging, encouraging individual, mm-hmm. and I find a spot where I can I can constantly encourage the in- individual, and then help the individual to shape the uh, shape that the quality that they have to improve and hone the quality that they have. So I was lucky. If those mm-hmm. individuals do not have that indiv- uh, that the quality or that person that who could help them from the beginning when they were a child. I feel responsible, but I should tell you, mm. we have, I have to be honest with you, Jenny. I'm not hundred percent successful. So it's not like, so it's easy by telling you it's easy by talking, but then in reality it's hard. So I'm not hundred percent saying that, oh, okay, all the conversations that I have with all my agents, yes, they are mm. they're all leaders of future. <laughs> no, it, it takes a lot of effort. It's not yeah. just from my side, from their side as well. 
Yeah. Just speaking about um, this whole element of leadership and what is a leader, Shirin, do you feel that everybody can be a leader? And if so, Mm. what qualities or traits are essential in order for success? I believe um, everybody can be a leader, but this is different from everybody wants to be a leader. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, at times uh, I talk to my agents or my, my friends, I would say that, no, we don't want to be a leader. We we want to just follow. <sighs> um, I don't want to put myself in a um, decision-making situation. I don't want to put myself, I don't want to be responsible for uh, other people's yeah. destiny. I want to just mind my own deal, my own life. And, and so, um, and I, I seen it actually, the number is increasing, which is totally fine. It's, it's just okay. Mm. Uh, that's their personal choice. So what qualities in, entails, um, Of course, a leader should be competent. Of course, a leader should be knowledgeable, should have um, the talent as well. These are the qualities that they can, a leader can uh, um, develop over time. Uh, it's easy. But then the, the very mm. first thing is important is to, be, to want to help other people. Yeah. And and one word really comes out right now, um, even from the start when we started talking together today, is you're very intentional. Mm. And I, I just love how you have this vision already in, in your mind. Um, I want to just maybe focus inwards on your real estate brokerage, 88 West Realty. First of all, how did that name come up? I want to know before I <laughs> ask this question. <laughs> it's it's a very interesting story. I'm... I'm I'm, just, I'm not going to, I'm going to cut it very short. So uh, since I moved to Canada 20 years ago, I lived in West Van. I have never moved out. Mm. So West, West Vancouver is my hometown. Um, so uh, my, my brokerage was in West Van. Back in 2015, in West Vancouver, Iranian community and Chinese were the most dominant communities active in real estate. So I knew that a collaboration of Chinese and Persian would be, would be a perfect scenario. So I wanted to partner with um, a Chinese gentleman, a realtor, very super successful realtor. And then we, we thought about, okay, the name, something that would appeal to Chinese community, number eight, of course, it was a lucky <laughs> number. But then I didn't want to make it 100% Chinese. I wanted to make it Westernized as well. So I said, okay, let's come up with something, a mix. And it's, uh, it's interesting to know that back then, whatever we, we gave the name by a combination of eight was taken. So many companies are registered <laughs> wow. with the, a combination Not just of real estate eight. offices. That was the story. Any, any <laughs> off. Sharon, we have a question about your brokerage. You have a mix of um, how many agents right now, actually? I think it must be around 54. I interviewed another lady last night. She's going to join must be around 54. Amazing. Congrats. <laughs> so uh, you have a mix of residential sales and property managers. For those who are thinking of, you know, taking one or the other for their license, what is the difference in, you know, responsibilities, in income, in, in, uh, in just even just like the day-to-day activities? Yes. Great question. Um, this is the question, actually, I an- always answer to individuals who want, who are thinking, of, who are in sales already, and they want to apply for, to get their property management license. And I explain to them how it entails. Uh, so once you are in sales, um, it, uh, you won't make any money until you you find a client, and then you don't know that whether you're going to make any money or not. But then in property management, uh, the moment that you get your license, it's easy to find a client and then the, the money will flow in into your business. But then the amount of money is very limited. We we charge only half of a month um, um, for commission or for service paid, for services, So which, which is not much, but uh, it gives you enough money to start your own business. However, mm. the, the challenges that it brings, the property management brings uh, with it, it's much more than much more than sales. The reason is that you have to deal with 
two types of clients. One is, of course, tenant is not our client, but then we have to look after the tenants as well. Legally, we are not agents of tenants, but we have to look after themselves. And then they're typically at the beginning, honeymoon, they're very nice, sweet, but then uh, it changes, <laughs> the temper completely changes the moment the contract Aww. is signed. And then I explained to them, they have to have the resilience and then the, the strength to be in this business. Now, we often, as property managers, we are sandwiched in between the tenants and the landlords. And then if they get mm -hmm. mad at the tenant, we are the one who, who is responsible. <laughs> if the tenant is not happy with the landlord again, we are. Um, so resilience is extremely important. They should be, they should be ready for a um, uh, high demanding service. Because mm -hmm. constantly the tenant wants to be heard. If it is uh, at 1 a.m., the tenant doesn't carry this 1 a.m. Uh, there is a flooding. Somebody should attend to it. So, um, But mm -hmm. then for a realtor, obviously at 1 a.m., it's um, no realtor is expected to work at 1 a.m. That's a personal choice. But then when it comes to property management, it's not a personal choice. It's mm -hmm. the demand by the, by the business. And then also uh, gaining or having high... Um, how would I say it? Google reviews, five star Google reviews. It's super hard with the when running a uh, property management business. And I say, well, we do have, we are lucky, we do have a lot of uh, five star Google reviews. But whatever bad Google review we have, it's either from the tenant or landlord. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you do. <laughs> and very it's probably so emotional too. Pardon me? Yeah. It's probably 100% emotion too, right? They're just putting their anger somewhere. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's, I mean, they say that you don't give me a discount. You, you are giving me uh, an eviction notice. I'm going to leave a bad review for you. <laughs> Come on, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, how, how does your brokerage engage with within the local community? And what do you believe... Um, I guess, how, or how do you believe that enhances your guys' reputation um, in doing so and the relationships created? So in terms of local community, being an, again, entrepreneur, I love supporting local, local businesses. Um, since a um, couple of years ago, we started different campaigns, support local business. And then we started reaching out to different uh, local businesses, talking to them, promote them, interview with them. And then, um, so it's been very, very successful, very rewarding. In terms of reaching out to my own community, Iranian community, I'm quite well known in my community, uh, obviously 20 years and then in the, in the business and then running seminars and webinars uh, for Iranian community. It's been very, mm. very um, successful and very uh, uh, received a lot of positive uh, feedback from my own community. Uh, I believe I do have uh, the responsibility of educating, advocating, talking to the new immigrants, Iranian community and teach them or show them how to find a rental property. What are the rules of rentals? What are the, because we come from a different, totally different uh, culture. And then what are the rules of working with a realtor? You can't at the same time work with five realtors and then uh, keep it <laughs> quiet. Don't tell the other one. Uh, work with Shirin and then don't tell the other one and use the other one's service. <laughs> these are the things that um, makes my job uh, more difficult. But as I mm -hmm. said, I love it and I do it constantly. That's the reason I've been able to um, project a brand of knowledge, hardworking, integrity. And I love that. Mm -hmm. The combination of mm -hmm. hard work, knowledge, integrity. And um, this is what I've been uh, actually during this election. I see that how the other agents, they don't see me as a competitor. They see me as a supporter, as an educator mm -hmm. in my community. That's the reason that they're showing their support. And I'm happy about taking this role. Yeah, and an alliance to us. Uh, and you actually co-founded Light, Hope, and Life Foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about how that uh, resonates with your heart? Well, again, being an altruistic individual, um, I always... Um, supported like i'm sure that uh, you you do as well supported charities and i remember back in 2000, 2008 uh, one of my friends went to iran and as soon as she came back she was uh, she was totally devastated by the by the stories that she 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 saw she noticed and then she uh, how the girls have been boys have been sold for $100 $50 uh, in the border of iran and oh, afghanistan wow. 
Um, so, and then she said, uh, we need to do something. So uh, it was three of us. And then we sat together and then um, surprisingly back then I had zero dollars. And I said, Shirin, you don't have even money. I mean, market would crash. And then I was, I, mm -hmm. I built my house. I had no money. What are you going to do? How are you going to support? But then I believe um, putting myself out there and then to say, okay, doesn't matter if I don't have money here, I can at least raise funds. And then that was my agenda. We started the charity in 2008 um, with the hope of being able to raise funds and then send it back to Iran, support the, uh, those kids. Still, mm -hmm. um, until now, we do have the kids. We have about uh, close to 400, um, lucky. Wow, but then wow. we had to close down the charity. The reason is uh, after the sanction between Iran and, of course, uh, um, Canada and many other countries. So we were not allowed to send a penny to Iran through the charity. So we had to close it down. And then we are sending our own money. It's totally fine. We can send our own money, donate our own money without uh, running the charity. That was the reason. Now I have great news, great news. Now that what we are doing, we are repurposing that charity into mm -hmm. having, starting a shelter for Farsi speaking women in North Shore. Yeah. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Of course, your entrepreneurial mind <laughs> just keeps going. Yes. Nothing will stop you. No. Nothing oh, will no. stop Especially you. Especially when it comes to women. That's amazing. Uh, when it comes to women, yeah. uh, yes, my heart is there. And I always want to support women. Always. And I do whatever I can in my capacity. Oh, what a great start to hearing this for so the year, nice. right? Yes. Um, we want to wrap up with five rapid fire questions. And we have, uh, we're going to start right now, if that's okay. If someone had 300000 for a down payment, where and what should they be investing their money in right now? Great question. My first um, question would be what is the purpose of investment? Do you want to, are you considering having cash flow? Or do you, mm -hmm. are you thinking of the appreciation? What is it that you have in mind? So for cash flow, I would say that go out of BC or go to Northern BC where you can earn the value of the property is lower and then the rental income is higher. So it can service the debt. And then also you will have some, a couple of hundred dollars in your pocket. That was, uh, that's number one question. If somebody wants, is thinking of, uh, appreciation, then I say, okay, let's look at the areas that are expanding, the areas that we see that the infrastructure is going to improve. Then those are the areas that we focus on. And then we, um, uh, we encourage individuals to invest in those areas. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, we all talked about Langley. We all talked about Surrey. Langley, the SkyTrain is going there. Uh, can be corridor SkyTrain is going there. <laughs> invest in those areas. Infrastructure, I believe, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And uh, we focus on finding where the infrastructure is uh, improving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question. If you could give one piece of advice to an aspiring new realtor, what would it be? Personal development. I believe mm -hmm. uh, we need to improve our personal development skill set. Um, if, um, if we improve our skill set and then improve our personality, uh, by, by saying personality, meaning that in, uh, improve our patience, be ready mm -hmm. for hard work, be resilient. Um, and then do it constantly. Consistency is extremely yeah. important. Uh, and keep up the motivation. Don't let the motivation go down. Keep it as high as possible. Keep the drive, uh, keep the, the fire within, keep it on and then move forward. Uh, and then have faith. Faith is very yeah. important. I, I have faith always, constantly. And then and that's faith has <laughs> never been, uh, never been lowered because I believe in you do the right thing you will receive the right result nice yeah um, great tip uh, describe yourself in three words <laughs> I guess I told you several times resilience is extremely There's, important yes. I'm positive totally. highly motivated always positive always, always smile <laughs> always um, and yeah. I love to be positive um, altruistic uh, the the mm -hmm. joy of helping other people, the joy of seeing other people, especially women, uh, stepping up the ladder, becoming successful. It's incomparable with any other joy in my life. 
apart from mm -hmm. uh, staying with my grandchildren, I should say. <laughs> That's amazing. I love them. Wow. I, I still can't even believe <laughs> you said you're 60 She's years old. She's a grandmother. Old. You said you're 60 years old? Yeah. Going At some to be point in this May. podcast. Going to be. Like, <laughs> honestly, I was like, where's the wrinkles there? I know. <laughs> Thank you. It's because, you know why? It's because she's so joyful and passionate about what she's doing. Exactly. It doesn't age her. Thank um, you. If you were not a realtor, what career path would you have pursued instead? Fashion. <laughs> Ooh. Fashion. Ah. I, I told you, fashion is still in my blood. I love it. I have eye for fashion. I just love it. Um, and I know, <laughs> I know. Over the years, I've developed the skill of uh, making um, dresses, making outfits for myself and my. But I don't have time. I have um, a room full of all the gadgets, all the fabric, all everything. As if when once you walk into that, you think that this is a uh, this is a tailor shop. So this is a seamstress job. Uh, fashion would be my passion. Yes. Yeah, and you mentioned that's where your mom taught you, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, you are running again for director at large with the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. How can our listeners vote for you and what is the process for that? Where can they go to listen to your campaign, see what your strategic plan is? Um, again, what website, how can they find you? Thank you, Jenny, for asking this question. And this is critical. We've been trying to reach out to our members, fellow realtors, to tell them that where to go. It's uh, votesharinsaleh.com. Um, okay, I try website. to put the, everything on that web page. What my objectives will be uh, if I'm if I'm elected, and then also um, all the contact informations are there. I would love to talk to individuals, to realtors, fellow realtors, and then see what is it that they want me to work on. And uh, I would, I welcome everyone to have a dialogue about um, the values. And that's uh, my main reason to um, taking part in this role. What are the role, the values that I can bring to the community, to our community of realtors? So um, how they can vote, they actually, this morning I received an email that the voting date is changed from 13th to 12th. On the 12th, all the oh. realtors will receive an email from the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, and then the links will be there. From the 12th, we will be sending the links of uh, my webpage, as well as the, the link for the uh, election to all the realtors as, as much as possible. Uh, and I, I want to here use this uh, mic and apologize my fellow realtors if they have received the text messages and emails, unwanted <laughs> text messages and emails. I truly apologize for that. And then we always provide uh, a button for unsubscribe mm -hmm. and then stop sending messages. <laughs> but I need your support. Uh, we need to no make No need to change. apologize. <laughs> no need to apologize. Everything you're doing is in the right direction to look after and empower our realtors. So I really thank you for your time today to come on our show. And we're going to also be storing um, the link as well so that people can go to your website and vote. Uh, listen up, you guys. January the 12th, you have every right to vote for who you want to represent us. Shaping Our Future is Shireen Sala. Thank you so much for coming on our show. I am grateful to you, to you both. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to working with you in future. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs>